Welcome everyone to the Campbell Clinic. Uh, my name is Trent Stevens. I'm one of the fifth year residents. Uh, typically we like to have our resident applicants come to Memphis so we can answer questions, show you the city. Uh, however, this time we've decided to put together a panel of residents so we can answer some of the questions that we typically get uh, from applicants. Uh, I'd like to go around and introduce our, our members. Gray, if you could start. So I'm Gray McClatchy. I'm also one of the fifth years. Um, I'm from Memphis originally, uh, but I went over to Arkansas for medical school, and now I've been back here in Memphis for the past four years. My name is Claire. I'm one of the second year residents. I'm originally from Lake Charles, Louisiana. I went to LSU for undergrad and med school, and now I've been here. Uh, my name's Rich. I'm originally from Chicago, Illinois. Did undergrad at WashU in St. Louis, medical school at Jefferson up in Philadelphia. And now I live here in Memphis, part of the Campbell Clinic family. Uh, my name is Stephanie. I'm one of the fourth year residents. Um, I grew up in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, went to undergrad and med school in Ohio, and then came down here for residency. Uh, I'm G.J. Matthew, one of the fifth years, uh, born in Kansas City, did undergrad and med school in Kansas as well, uh, like Gray and Trent, um, also one of the fifth years here. I said, my name is Trent, uh, originally from East Tennessee. I went to medical school here in Memphis and uh, stayed on for residency at Camel Clinic. So to get started, uh, Gray, if you could just tell us why you chose Camel Clinic. Sure, so for me, family had a large part, to, a large part of it. You know, my, I grew up here, my family's still here in Memphis, and I knew I wanted to be, I'd been away for college, med school, wanted to be back close to home for a little while, but also rot rotated here and uh, you know the training I thought was just second to none um, so it really worked out well in that aspect I thought it was a place I could go and I could get a really uh, broad experience in lots of different areas great trauma training peed sports I mean just across the board and so I thought that was really unique um, and I liked the family aspect of it so that was kind of a, a big point for me Claire can you speak to that also yeah so um what drew me to the Campbell Clinic, um, much like Gray, kind of just the broad um, experience we get. When you're you know, at our big trauma hospital, um, you see a lot of trauma. And then you get to go out to Campbell Clinic and see the, um, you know, the private side of orthopedics, um, which I think is you know, unique that we get such strong private experience, but also the trauma experience. Um, and then also what drew me here was just getting to meet everyone and seeing the camaraderie everyone had, and you know, it's what I want in a program. So, I think I found it. Very nice, Rich. Anything that you know, you chose Camel Clinics specifically, and then also is it a program you know that you would choose again? Yeah, um, kind of to echo what Gray and Claire uh, brought up. I mean, for me, I wanted a pretty intense operative experience. That was very important. Probably the most important factor for me, and. That's certainly here in spades. Um, where I went to medical school, they had a similar type of privademic setup where you have a private practice group providing all the academic teaching um, and orthopedic staff in the, in the inpatient setting in the teaching hospitals. And I really liked how you could see, you know, both the academic side of medicine done in a, you know, university <laughs> setting, but also, you know, the, the, these, the, you know, our staff are all private practice physicians and you know own a group practice and run a successful large orthopedic group practice um, which I thought was really relevant to be able to see both sides of uh, kind of how you know I would want to practice one day uh, on my own so that was that was a, a big second factor and um, third I, I personally just from the programs I rotated it at and you know my home program where I went to med school um, I wanted a, a, a program that was at least medium to larger size. I, I wanted more than six residents in my classes. So, you know, having eight, eight, eight residents per class here, I thought it was uh, a good size. And, you know, the, the camaraderie was something I really noticed, uh, you know, when I came here and uh, interviewed and did the social and everything like that, um, kind of getting a, a really good sense of that. So th those three things were pretty key for me. Yeah. And Stephanie, if you can add anything, and then also, you know, Rich kind of talked a little bit about the program. Uh, if you could you know, talk about kind of the program overview and just generally how Camel Clinic works. Um, so I agree 100% with what everybody said already. Those are all the things that drew me here. Um, in terms of how our program works, like. 
Claire mentioned, we have kind of a large part of our training is down at the trauma center downtown, and that's where you kind of take care of all of the you know busy traumas that happen here. Um, and then also the other side of things is the private academic side. So that's kind of more of a mentorship program where you're paired with a attending more so one on one on a specific rotation in a subspecialty. Um, and then out there you kind of get pretty much equal operative experience with clinic experience. So it's really good to see both sides of that. GJ? Um, so I guess in my case, I actually didn't rotate here. So I think, you know, just kind of like with a lot of applicants, you're kind of going through programs, you're kind of shotgunning, applying to a lot of places. And I think what really stuck out to me was, you know, this is the place that kind of wrote the, the textbook, the textbook orthopedics. I'm like, okay, this would be kind of good. Um, so I actually interviewed here. I think the biggest thing that really drew me was just kind of the, the sheer operative experience that a lot of the, you know, third, fourth, and fifth years were, were doing just in terms of autonomy and, you know, stuff that they graduated eventually to. And that really, I think, shot this program up for me is just being able to learn how to operate, how to be able to take care of stuff when you're on your own in practice and just kind of be able to, you know, not necessarily see how to do surgery, which is obviously important, but obviously getting your hands dirty and kind of getting stuff done. So that was really the biggest thing for me. Um, I think, you know, as Stephanie kind of mentioned, you know, the main experience I would probably say is trauma center here in just terms of learning how to, to operate, but obviously our children's program here is awesome as well in terms of kind of seeing everything from the adult side, the pediatric side, but then also kind of out east in our private setting. And I think all of those plus, um, I think just the sheer camaraderie I saw in my interview dinner of just multiple residents at different areas, different levels, different skill sets, all hanging out. There was, there's no clicks that I, at least I was aware of or anything like that, just in general of you know, people hanging out with whoever is available at that time. And I think that's what really drew me here. Yeah, nice. All right, so Gray, you've been here it's now your fifth year. Um, what's been your favorite part of the program? You know, I'd say probably for me, and it's almost like a buzzword tonight, but the, the family aspect of it, you know, it's a, it's a big residency. There's, there's 40 people and then, you know, there's 40 people, 40 wives or, or husbands. And so there's always things going on. You're always doing stuff with your class. The Campbell Clinic's putting on events all the time. Um, you know, we've, got a, we've got a golf tournament in the fall. We've got you know multiple Christmas parties. Uh, we have a roast that we do in the spring. Um, and you know all these all these events. You know the, the Campbell Clinic puts them on, but then residents also host their own things at their house. And just really over the past five years, I mean, it, the Campbell Clinic has kind of become you know my family. And so I know there's eight people in our class, and like we couldn't be closer. You know I got married while I was here. And all, you know, everybody but the person that was on call drove, you know, five hours to my wedding. They were all there. You know, some had to be on call the next day, but they did it. Um, and, you know, that goes in between classes as well. Some of my best friends are in the class, you know, below or above. So um, I think that's kind of been my favorite thing going through. Yeah. And Claire, you, on the earlier side of the program, what's some of the things that you've noticed, you know, that, that you, know, you really love? Yeah. So, yeah, being a, a second year, um, been here about a year now. Um, and I, um, you know, I'm not married, so I moved here just by myself, but immediately had, you know, seven other best friends in my class, um, plus all of their wives or girlfriends. Um, we're all very close and hang out a lot. Um, and then, but like Gray said, it's not just my class. Um, I think all the upper levels um, kind of take, when, like when you're an intern, under your, their wing and when you're on their service and try and teach you and, you know, just give you tips for when you're older and, you know, when they've gone through experiences and what helps them and things they've learned. And, and like Grace said too, like we definitely all, we hang out. It's not just, you know, oh, by class. And so it's a, like you said, we keep saying it, but it really is just like a big family. Um, so, so yeah, moving here alone, but immediately having like 40 best friends. Yeah. Um, so Rich, you as a non-Tennessee native, a non-Memphian, um, you, know, you chose to come here you know, to Memphis to train. Um, yeah. How's it been you know, living in Memphis? What, what have you liked? Uh, it's been great. So I, I, I kind of, for my, ever since I graduated high school, purposefully wanted to go somewhere different that I had never been before <clears throat> each step of the way. So I chose to go to one city for college and then I, I didn't apply anywhere in that city for med school because I wanted to go somewhere totally different. And when it came to residency, I didn't apply to any program in any city I'd ever lived in before. Um, my, my wife is from uh, the southeast and uh, is a southerner, and she did not uh, prefer, preferred not to go back up north. And I was like, uh, it, well, let me, let me look at the programs down south and in the mid-south. So, you know, I tried to find the best ones. And this, of course, was 
one of the top ones I could find and uh, came here and I spent a couple extra days in Memphis uh, by myself actually went out to Beale Street two nights in a row by myself on a Friday night Saturday night Perf perfect weather so I mean it was it was kicking down there and, and I just had a great time I thought the city was accessible enough where you know unlike where I'm from in Chicago or you know where I went to med school in Philly where you're, you're gonna be battling traffic like crazy the traffic here is nothing compared to what I had been used to so I found it very accessible but at the same time had all the kind of uh, benefits of, of a major city you know we got an you know international airport here um, uh, uh, you know major league sports all that kind of stuff um, so uh, yeah it, it appealed to me uh, from the start and like as I've lived here now going on my fourth year going into my fourth year just really enjoyed like the food scene like I love going out to eat um, the food scene is actually pretty impressive you know um, and uh, uh, the music, the live music, live events, all that kind of stuff is is awesome. So I've I've had a good a good time here. And Stephanie, you came from the Steel City. How have you yes. like living in Memphis? <laughs> you know what? It's my first time in the South, um, but I've really enjoyed it. Um, everybody down here is real friendly. Like everybody has been saying, we are like a family here. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of things to do in the city. Um, and outside of the city too. Um, there's tons of food, lots of breweries, great outdoor places, concerts, sports. So um, there's been no shortage of um, activities to do. So it's been really good. Very nice. Gijo, what do you like to do on your, on your time away from work? Oh man, well as Rich mentioned, uh, Beale Street. So I guess now I became a native of Beale Street, just living down in downtown for four years. but. Um, I don't know. I think the biggest thing is kind of the whole live music downtown. I think the nice thing about this program especially is I think on any given day, you can probably send a text out to anybody in your program. Um, I think at some point we've all grabbed beers at some point in terms of either breweries or just outside outdoor events. And I think that's also kind of the big things I really appreciate about this program is that just at any given moment, somebody's always down to interact, hang out, um, stuff like that. But in terms of stuff. I mean, Grizzlies games are here. We have a triple-A baseball team. I guess technically a triple-A soccer team, even though COVID kind of shut that down uh, for now. But I mean, I think there's plenty of events to do, whether you're in a sporting events, live music, live food. Um, interesting, there's a bunch of cooking classes downtown if you're a foodie. I'm not sure anyone else is, but I'm a huge foodie. So uh, that's right at my alley. And I, I mean, I think having the dichotomy of kind of stuff to do in terms of the clinic, but then stuff to do outside the clinic is one of the great things about this place. Yeah, very nice. You didn't even mention the gym. Uh, yeah. Like I lost a bet on that. The UT gym is a very excellent. Hours not so good, but otherwise very excellent. Very nice. Other gyms? We got we got other locations. Uh, we got the outdoor gym. Yeah, yeah. that's what I was gonna say. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a big runner, and we have. I mean, there's Shelby Farms, which just has miles of trails. There's something called the Green Line, um, which is like a trail that kind of goes through the city. And I know, like Rich, you bike a lot. So yeah. there's a lot of good biking, you know. Yeah, I was actually Ray talking to Trent to, yeah. More yeah. Than I did. yeah. I was talking to you today about the bike trails in Memphis. How you were yeah. surprised when you came here that the yeah. trails are as good as they are. Like yeah, I mean, you know, I've lived places that are super bike friendly cities and yeah. like as I've gotten more and more into cycling here, I, I mean there there are dedicated bike paths everywhere. Yeah. So it's Cycler. awesome. All right. So everybody's pretty spread out. Memphis is a large city. Um, Claire where do you live? Where do some of your uh, yeah. classmates live? So my class, um, we're kind of, we're all pretty, first year I think a couple people live downtown. Um, I have a house closer sort of to Midtown, um, I, which I personally like living there because you're between, you know, the big trauma centers downtown, but then Camel Clinic is out in Germantown. So if you live in between, you know, it's convenient. But even if you don't, and like Jujo, you live downtown, you can still hop on you know, the interstate and you're to Germantown, honestly, probably the same time it takes me to get there driving in the city. Um, but yeah, I mean, I live, um, I bought a house and, but it's, you know, I, there's sidewalks. It's great for running and walking and, um, you know, it's close to restaurants and breweries and bars and yeah, so. Yeah, I, I live, I've lived in the same spot for all four years. I guess I just don't like moving, but it's an apartment um, kind of in, in like the medical district near Midtown. And I've loved it. It's been convenient. It's been close to the hospitals downtown um, and it's close to a neighborhood that I run in all the time. 
Uh, but yeah, I'd say I'd say it's kind of a mix between people living in that midtown area, East Memphis or downtown, and you can't really go wrong with any of those spots. Yeah. Everyone I've talked to, which I think, it. like, I mean, that speaks to the fact that there is no wrong answer since yeah. mm -hmm. everyone is kind of like East Memphis, midtown. Everyone lives everywhere, so. Yeah. Being new to Memphis, I I you know didn't didn't quite know all of the you know the areas and stuff, and so. Me and my wife just got an apartment downtown right by the Redbird Stadium for our, my intern year. We, you know, we loved it. We could just walk right into the city, go to games or go to restaurants, get down to Beale Street. And then uh, once we kind of got more familiar with it, where everybody was living in the different neighborhoods and we had a dog that wanted, you know, wanted more space for her. So we ended up getting, you know, a house um, in Midtown. But uh, yeah, living downtown was great for a yeah. year. So I kind of saw both sides of things. Yeah, I mean, was it you buying a house here in Memphis? Is it tough, easy, is it affordable? Um, yeah, so yeah, so I also bought a house and um, definitely affordable. And it's not, because Memphis has a lot of like older homes. So like I said, like, I mean, I'm not married, but I have a dog and a cat. So I, you know, I wanted like a backyard, um, but I have like a two bedroom, one bath house, you know, so it was very affordable, um, but it's still the comfort of, you know, having a home. In med school, I was in like a one bedroom apartment. So I wanted, you know, a more homey feel. So, yeah. Yeah, I think Mem that's one a good point about Memphis. It's super affordable. Mm -hmm. like, the houses are pretty reasonable and the apartment, the cost of that's been pretty cheap, so. It's been a great city to live in from that aspect. Let's uh, talk a little bit about the breakdown. There's 40 residents in our group. Um, you kind of get through you know, married, single, you know, how many people have families, kids. You know, a lot of times when, when folks come here for applicants and, and you know, a lot of their questions is, you know, can I bring my family here? Um, is Campbell Clinic welcoming to families? Are there other families that have kids? Uh, are there places for them to live? Um, you know, at least Gigi. Tell me about your experience. Uh, I mean, I think we have a fairly good mix. I think initially when I came here as an intern, I would probably say it was about half families, half like young couples, single people. Um, I think now coming through the residence, probably shift a little bit more towards three fourths young couple, married kid, married people with kids. Um, but that being said, I don't think there's really been any aspect where, like, as a person that came in single here, that I didn't really have any like I guess issues, you know, interacting with anybody who had young families or kids. Um, that being said, I think this is definitely a welcoming program in terms of bringing families, bringing kids. Um, I think just kind of alluding to the fact that you can always find people to hang out with. I think you can say the same thing about families too. I mean, mm -hmm. I see stuff on Instagram all the time of kids having play dates, and I'm like, wow, that looks kind of cool. It's 2 p.m. I'm still at work and I'm seeing play dates <laughs> outside, but hey, that's, that's fine. Um, but I mean, I think either way, from a welcoming standpoint, I think it's completely welcoming to family and kids. Yeah. I think there's something in the water. Like by the time you get to be a fourth or fifth year, like you got to have a kid. Like everybody's popping kids out. Definitely do not drink that water. Just yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you got not time. yet. There's still time. Yeah. Uh, you know, is your family like living in Memphis, Rich? You, you've, you've got a yeah. spouse. Uh, have they enjoyed it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. My wife likes Memphis a lot. Um, uh, like I said, it's pretty accessible. We're pretty much able to do whatever we want. Uh, we've traveled internationally over the years on the uh you know it is residency so it's not like i'm on vacation all the time but you know i i've had we've had the opportunity to take vacation usually about once a year but we've traveled internationally very easily from this city uh you know family coming in and out from you know my parents live in north carolina her hers live in georgia it's pretty easy to get in and out um she enjoys it here she, i mean she works full time for one of the big companies here uh, and, and she enjoys it. Like I said, it's accessible. It's a big city, but it doesn't feel like uh, uh, an overwhelming me me metropolis type of situation, you know? It's, it's pretty, pretty easy to get around and, and, and deal with everything. Uh, but yeah, she's enjoyed it. We're, you know, we're expecting our first kid, so that, that'll be exciting. Drank the um, water. Drank the water. Yeah. All the, uh, yes, yeah, yeah, I drank the water. Um, <laughs> All, all the spouses too, you know, the, the, the wives, husbands, girlfriends, boyfriends, it's not just married people, but they're, they've got a pretty robust social life of their own support system. They're all on, you know, different, or uh, they're all on text threads and things like that, um, doing various things amongst themselves too. So, I mean, they're, they're, uh, their their social net and everything like that is, yeah, is pretty pretty impressive. I was gonna say we have our like Monday night meetings usually when we're, they're not on Zoom, but uh, yeah. all the wives would like get together while we're at our meeting and they'll go watch like The Bachelorette or The Bachelor, whatever they watch these days. Yeah. 
<laughs> and so that's like their Monday night meeting. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, so living in Memphis, uh, Stephanie, you, you feel safe here. Do you like Memphis? Do you like where you live? I do. So I live kind of in the Midtown area as well, where a lot of other people live. I live in an apartment. Um, yeah, and I've always felt safe here. Um, there's not been any issues. Just got to be smart about where you go. GJ, you're a downtown guy. Yeah, I mean, I, I live downtown, obviously. Contrary to popular belief, you probably shouldn't be walking very late at night. I actually have not had problems walking back from downtown to Beale Street back home, but obviously just kind of like Stephanie said, I mean, just be smart. Obviously, you know, don't stay out too late if you need to use Uber, everything like Uber, Lyft, all that stuff is very accessible here. There's not been any issues with that, uh, but I've been in my same condo for four years now. I've not had any problems with it. Yeah, I, I grew up in Memphis and I, I've never had any issues with that. And I think that's kind of a like the bad rap that Memphis has, but mm -hmm. I've never felt not safe, know where I've been. Um, and I haven't, none of my close friends have ever had issues with it. You know, I think that any big city has some crime, mm -hmm. um, but you just kind of, and you know where not to go, I guess, at certain times, but it's never been an issue for me. I mean, there's definitely really safe, good areas to be here and I've never really been concerned or felt not safe. My wife's the same way. I think I even sent guys in my class when I first moved here. I think I sent them 20, and I think Trent and Gray, you pretty much pared down my list down to like, I think eight or nine. You're like, avoid these areas. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that was a nice thing about kind of knowing people in my class that lived here or even knowing people in the program is, you know, I mean, I only had one day or one weekend to come here and, you know, being able to look up places and just send you guys addresses and you're like, all right, stay from these areas. These are good apartments, you know, good reviews, et cetera, because obviously people in the city or people that grew up here you got a, a lot better of a perspective, mm -hmm. um, at least for somebody that was coming from the outside in. Yeah. yeah, I think it depends where, you know, your experience, where you grew, where you grew up, what, where you've lived before. I mean, this is my fi probably fourth or fifth major city that I've lived in, and it's felt really no different. I mean, yeah. you, you, you know, there's areas of any major city you don't go. Um, and, you know, for whatever reason, there's there's bad neighborhoods here and there. But, you know, unless, you know, I, I think it would be different if I, you know, had only lived in you know, some Stepford type of s suburb my entire life. And then <laughs> this is the first city I've lev ever lived in. Oh my gosh, it's a bad neighborhood. Well, yeah, I mean, that's it, it never felt any different for me having lived in a couple other big cities before. Mm -hmm. I mean, but also too, worth. if like, you know, if someone is concerned about that, Germantown is also an option. I know we've had residents that have yeah. lived in Germantown yeah. um, and it's, I mean, you the know, burbs. Uh, it, the burbs, but it's, you know, literally you're driving down the street and it's like, okay, leaving Memphis, now you're in Germantown. Um, and that's a very, if you're concerned, a very safe option. But, you know, like, you know, like Grace said, none of yeah. us have ever had, you know, any mm -hmm. issues. So. so that's a probably a good segue a little bit more about the program. So is you know, the folks watching this probably know, you know, we operate and we work in a lot of different places, a lot of different hospitals, clinic settings, and these are located across the city in different mm -hmm. locations. Um, so I guess, Stephanie, you can talk a little bit about how's the program set up as far as locations throughout the city and where, where, we, where we work every day. So a um, couple of the places that we've mentioned so far, the trauma center is downtown. Right next to that is um, Le Bonner, which is the pediatric hospital. We get really, really good experience there. Um, another hospital that's kind of down there in the medical district, that's the area downtown where all the hospitals pretty much are, um, is Methodist and we, we rotate there. Um, we do kind of like a little mini trauma rotation there. Um, and then that's also a place where a lot of our attendings will do like joints and foot and ankle surgeries, um, things like that. Um, in terms of the other side of things, the private-demic side, um, our clinics, our main clinics are out in Germantown. Um, so we'll go, that's about like 15 minutes from downtown, I would say. And then um, some of the other hospitals that we go to out there are um, the Baptist system, and that's out in Collierville, which is maybe like 10 minutes from Germantown. Mm -hmm. And again, we'll do a lot of elective surgeries out there um, when you're on different rotations with uh, specific attendings. So it is a little spread out, but everything pretty much you can get to in 15 minutes driving. Um, and it's nice to kind of see different hospital systems and get like a little bit of experience from each one. They're all a little bit different. Um, the clinic is its kind of separate thing and then each hospital is slightly different. Um, so yeah. Sounds like a lot of driving. 
15 minutes, but I mean, how, how is it driving in Memphis? I mean, is it? 20 minutes if you 20. don't drive like Stephanie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, sorry. Uh, just coming from downtown to like, so I guess probably the furthest place I drive to would be Carryville. That's mm -hmm. probably a 35, 40 minute drive for me downtown. But Rich mentioned earlier, there's like no traffic here. Yeah. Traffic How often isn't. Are you there? Uh, so uh, probably in the later years, I would say third, fourth, and fifth year, you're probably there. Uh, probably a good chunk half of the year, if anything, if you really have to stretch it. Probably say more downtown for the first half. Uh, so I mean, yes, it does get relatively old, you know, getting up driving, but. At the same time, um, I think the one thing I kind of appreciate it kind of out there is it's more of a mentorship model. It's just you and the attending, most of it. I mean, mm -hmm. you get a one-on-one -on -one experience out there, especially kind of in your later years, fourth and fifth year especially. Uh, and I think, you know, obviously the trauma experience, the pediatric experience is great from an operative standpoint, but I think kind of learning the, you know, the finer things of how to operate, how to take care of people, how, you know, your attending sees people in clinic, just kind of taking their habits and trying to apply that later in practice, I think is kind of a nice thing also, and just being able to experience that out there. Yeah. Right. One thing about the driving, you know, I, I feel like the busier rotations are the ones downtown. So like the Med, you know, the Bonner. And so living close to there, like if you're busier, it's a shorter drive. But mm -hmm. then when you're going out east, I mean, it's yeah. it's not it's busy. There, like, like, yeah. 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 You've got later hours, clinic, you're done early. earlier. Mm -hmm. And so it's not bad doing yeah. that drive. Like you're not really in like rush hour traffic or anything. Mm -hmm. You've got more time to kill. The morning. Yeah. 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 Great. Talk a little bit about the mentorship <laughs> model. I mean, that's, I think something that's maybe not we're we're not alone in that but it's definitely unique. yeah no I, that's something that i think's great here um somebody mentioned earlier you know like you really wrote the textbook here but i mean that's that's true they have they have some of like some big names in orthopedics and these are guys that you get to work with operate with get to know like i think there's two or three past presidents of the academy here right now and so they um and they're all super approachable and like you or work with them and it's just you and them and you're on their service for you know six weeks to a month to uh, three months and so you really get to know them they get to know you they get to trust you more so they let you do more in the operating room and in clinic and um i think that's it's great to have that experience here getting to work with those those people um and learn from them like that very nice all right a little more brass tacks claire tell me about a typical week as a campbell clinic resident yeah, so I mean, I think that's very, it's, it changes greatly depending on, you know, what rotation you're on. So I'm, I'm at the med right now, our trauma center. Um, so that's kind of every day, very OR heavy. Um, you have clinic once a week, you know, it's clinic, but for the most part, you're in the OR. Um, like Stephanie said, Le Bonner, the children's hospital. Um, we have awesome pediatric, you know, orthopedic surgeons. They're doing, you know, big scoliosis spines. Um, but we also get, you know, pediatric trauma, um, and again, you know, there's a good bit of clinic, but that comes with, I think, with all, you know, pediatrics especially. Um, but so that's a really good mix. Um, and then, you know, like Grace said, when, you ha when you're on, like, your more, you know, mentorship um, rotations, um, then you get to really see what a true attendings I guess, you know, lifestyle and schedule really is. Um, I think as residents, we were probably skewed and we think, you know, you're in the OR all the time and then you practice and you're like, oh, <laughs> you know. So I think you get to, you know, see both sides. So very dependent on what rotation you're on, which also, you know, keeps it interesting. You're not just doing the same thing every day. And so. Yeah. Rich, tell me about the call. It's always a popular question that people, people like to ask. Um, yeah. You know, I, I think our call pool is right it's a little dependent on the year so you yeah. can kind of talk to that a little bit yeah so uh intern year here is nice no call zero call <clears throat> your second year you start taking call uh out east which is uh <clears throat> not not um typically level one hot trauma uh, it's usually like a little bit more bread and butter orthopedic injuries like uh, you know ankle fractures or distal radius things like that um, it's not as busy out there when you're holding the pager um, you always have a backup uh, call person a more senior resident you can talk to and then you're responsible for you know wh whatever staff is on call that night there's always a staff person on call that is responsible for everything um, and they're easily accessible <clears throat> that's uh, about half of your second year you're doing that and the other half you're you're, you know, you're downtown at the med, and when you're on call there, uh, you are um, essentially either 
the consult doctor, like you are the face of orthopedics at our level one trauma center, the first line person. Um, but if you're not on that, if you're not doing that uh, role, your other role when you take call is essentially just to operate. Um, uh, emergency cases overnight, you're there in the OR, that's, that's your job. And when that's your job, you're not seeing consults, your only focus is emergency cases overnight. Um, third year, you get a little bit more responsibility. You start taking call um, at the children's hospital. And to emphasize, like, our children's hospital and experience here is pretty, pretty awesome because it's, it's a true level one pediatric trauma center. We don't ship anybody out for pediatrics. Their pediatrics rotations, like some of the programs, you know, some of the other programs I rotated at, they had to ship their residents out for their peds rotation. You know, it's, it's, it's right here, it's a level one center, it's, it's pretty robust. Um, but, uh, you know, you start taking call there. Um, on average, it's, uh, you know, one night a week and then one weekend a month, which is pretty reasonable. Um, and then, uh, you know, when you're at the med, you take med call. Uh, usually that's on average Q4 uh, when you're a three. <clears throat> Fourth year, you take a Q4 call at the med again when you're there and then you're in the uh, Methodist level two trauma center call pool. And again, that's about one, one week, a, week day a week and one weekend a month. Um, and then same thing for fifth year, so. It's pretty reasonable. The busiest call is certainly when you're at the level one centers. Right. The med when you're in the adult world, Le Bonner when you're in the children's world. So, and so we get a lot of questions about our, you know, we, you know, we love talking about how busy our trauma center is, and it really, it really is, but of course that provides a lot of work. Um, another common question is night float. Like do, what type of night float system do we have? Stephanie, he, you were recently uh, on your trauma rotation. Yes. A bit about that. So when we're at the med as a second year, um, now we have a, a night float system where there's a second year holding the consult pager during the day and then somebody comes in at night and does the same thing another second year. Um, and then so you do that a month at a time and you alternate with um, being on teams, which is when you're operating. Um, so, yeah. yeah. And if you're on a the night float system, if you're doing that, do you mm -hmm. have other people, are there other folks that are in there either for the weekends, you know, to take that? Um, like, so it's not just those two. Yeah, so on Fridays, um, one of our third, the third year uh, resident that's on the research rotation, that's their uh, kind of call day. They're not in a separate call pool. They'll come in and, and work a 24 hour shift there with the intern helping. Mm -hmm. um, so that kind of breaks up the week for the two second years that are um, holding the pager for the month. Yeah. But one thing I really, you know, like too is, so when you're the two, like, you know, we said you're the, you're the face of orthopedics at this level one, you know, big trauma center. And, you know, we see really intense stuff, um, but you're never alone. There's, you know, in the ortho team room, there's um, the, you know, the chief and then the junior on call that night that are there to operate. Um, and so the consult guy, you know, of course, you know, you're here to learn and figure it out, but you can go back and you know, tell your chief, you're like, hey, I just saw this, I want to do this, and, you know, they'll tell you if that's, you know, it's great, or like, no, <laughs> but, um, you know, like again. yeah, yeah, but, um, but yeah, it's good, so it's, you know, it's a good level of, of, of you know, difficulty, um, it's, it's intense and it's stressful, but you're never alone, there's yeah, someone so there, when you're you, on you don't call have to, night. you know, call someone. You can speak to someone in person. Be like, yeah. hey, I just like saw this. Like during the day, Come there's like me. ten other residents in yeah. the room that you can always go to, even if they're not the resident that's on call. And then overnight, you have, like Claire mentioned, you have a, a chief there, and then whoever their call partner is. So there's always somebody there to help you, and you're never alone. Yeah. And I think to kind of piggyback uh, to clarify, you know, three months of trauma, your second, third, fourth, and fifth year. I guess technically six months is a second year with three months kind of split up between the teams or the operative experience or, or the consult guy. Uh, but yeah, there's always a fifth year or fourth year who's the kind of the senior, the chief on call at night or second, third year. It's essentially a buddy call. But yeah, I mean, as Stephanie mentioned, any given time during the daytime, there's, you know, nine or 10 other people there. And then at night, you're, you know, we're taking in-house calls. So there's always someone there regardless. Yeah. yeah. And then you know, Stephanie mentioned research rotation. So Gijo, as a well-published future 
orthopedic reconstruction specialist. Tell me a little bit about our, our research opportunities and the research rotation. Yeah, so uh, third year, you get six weeks. I mean, I guess technically throughout the entire residency, you can do research anytime, but specifically we have six weeks or seven weeks, depending how you look at it, uh, during your third year, basically dedicated research. Uh, we've had you know, two or three research nurses that are really well acquainted with kind of the projects we have. There's always attendings at any given time. You know, wanting to publish stuff. In my case, Dr. Toy, one of our arthroplasty guys, um, he had a, a couple of studies that you know I'd tacked onto him. I actually also had the benefit of having upper levels also, you know, wanting to publish stuff too. And I think all of us at some point, you know, since we've been here, you just either email people out or you know, kind of see these emails in our inbox of hey, you know, there's a study going on. So there's always ample opportunities. Uh, we have a biomechanics lab uh, that Dr. Bill Mahalko kind of heads up as well. Uh, in addition to kind of the basic science side, there's always clinical research, just kind of lit review or chart review, stuff like that. So, I mean, there's opportunities ample here if you're, you're wanting to do that. And, you know, we have six weeks or seven weeks designated for that during our third year. In addition to, you know, having the, uh, you know, the published requirement we have at the end of our residency of being able to have something at least, you know, in hand, whether it's about to be published, submitted, et cetera. But, I mean, I think that's just one of the big stresses we have is, you know, having a great operating experience here, but also as, you know, well-published, you know, clinicians being able to, you know, get research out there and, you know, kind of at least get started in the kind of the academic field too. Yeah. All right. Uh, research is one of the rotations we do. Um, you know, I think in Camel Clinic, we have several staff uh, in all the different specialties. I guess, Greg, can you kind of talk about, um, you know, through the four or five years, um, you know, what has your experience been in all the different rotations? Do you feel like you've, you know, do you feel like you've while. seen it all? Um, you know, do you feel like you're yeah. lacking anything as far as specific no, rotations? So I, I think that's a good question, but there's, there's, uh, you get to see pretty much everything here. You know, everybody always talks about the trauma experience that we have here, and that's, that's great. We are, we do get a lot of um, experience with trauma. I think that that is where you learn uh, the most in some instances because of the autonomy that you have. Um, so when, you know, I'm starting my fifth year here, so I've done four years, and I mean, I, there's not much that's going to scare me that's going to come in um, on a trauma call that I don't feel like I can at least stabilize and get under control, um, and then fractures to fix. So I mean, the trauma experience is, is excellent, and I think that anybody graduating from this program would say that. Um, the PEDS experience is great as well. Like they said, you know, it's a level one pediatric center, and it it like the trauma program covers a huge area. So it's, you know, for those that don't know, it's from Memphis to halfway to Nashville, to halfway to Little Rock, to halfway to Jackson, Mississippi, and basically halfway to, to Missouri, to St. Louis. So that's a huge catch area. And so you get all sorts of cases that come in. And so you get that same experience in the pediatric population as well. Um, uh, the sports experience, you get to work with uh, people like Dr. Azar who covers the Grizzlies. Um, you know, we get sports coverage there. We get to, to work with the Redbirds. Um, high schools here in town, they, they cover the, the um, minor league uh, soccer team as well. Um, so great sports experience there as well. Um, the foot and ankle experience is, is, is strong. Um, you get a rotation there as a fourth year and a third year, if I remember correctly. Yep. Um, and that's pretty much the model across the board. You get essentially two, at least two rotations in every subspecialty. Um, so you get kind of a, a taste of, um, of everything twice. Um, the, uh, the spine program, they're, they're, just, they're bringing back two more spine attendings, so that's growing. Um, so there are going to be more cases in that, in that department as well. Hands, great. Get to work with, with Dr. Cal. Get to do a Wilderness Journal Club with him, so you can <laughs> learn how to take care of stuff out in the wild. Um, what am I missing? I think it's not... Again, butt in. But so intern, you're here, you, you get to operate. You're not, you know, on the floor holding a pager, you know, talking to nurses about like Zofran. Like you, you know, you get to be in the, so, <laughs> yeah, if you're off service. But yeah. when you're on ortho, like, you know, you get to operate, um, which I think a lot of programs, you know, interns don't really see the OR much. Um, so I think that's a big benefit here. I think in general, what, Gray was saying, it's back to one of Trenton's original questions, why this place? One of the things I, I realized early on in my intern year, and it was actually because of one of my classmates pointed this out, and I hadn't even realized it. I had already matched into orthopedics. I had started uh, as an orthopedic res or, or an orthopedic intern. 
but he was like, yeah, whatever specialty you go into, I mean, you may, you may have some niche in pediatric hand deformity correction or something like that. That may be your niche, but you're going to take call somewhere in your life. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're going to be in attending somewhere. You're going to take general orthopedic call. And so, I mean, what, what we're able to see and experience, yeah, the trauma experience is where we get our, our bona fides and everything, but being able to see such great people in, in almost every specialty, um, you know, in-house tumor rotation, you don't get shipped out for that, you don't take a course for that. Pediatrics, very strong here. Uh, those sorts of things, like, you know, when I get out on my own, no matter what my specialty is or subspecialty, or if I'm like some super neat niche guy or whatever, I'll be able to deal with the general orthopedics call confidently because I'll be responsible for that. No matter what, you know, what practice I join, I'm going to take call. And so I won't be scared of most stuff coming through the door. I'd be like, yep, yeah, I'd, I've seen this plenty of times at the med or at Le Bonner. So. Yeah, I'll, and kind of to my next question, I'll leave this for our uh, senior residents. You know, do you feel like this program has prepared you uh, for your career, for your fellowship? Um, has it provided you those opportunities? Yeah, so I, I kind of talked about that some with the last question, um, but absolutely. I think that I am probably better prepared than most of the other residents I've talked to from other programs around the country. I think that our experience is second to none. Um, and, you know, the staff that you work with as well, they're excellent in, in setting you up to succeed, but also, you know, in looking for fellowships. You know, we just, we just, G. Joe, you and myself just went through that whole process. And so they, you know, you can talk to them about, about that and they can, they give you their insights on it. They a lot of times know people at these other programs as well that can call on your behalf. Um, and that's, in, that's invaluable just to have that. So um, I think that's been great. I think that coming from this program, um, I'm, I'm more than prepared for whatever comes next. Yeah, I think kind of with that, I mean, I'd be lying if I told you that, you know, of course, if I see something on my own in practice, of course, initially you're gonna be like, okay, I'm, I'm scared, I'm doing this on my own. This is the first time I don't have backup behind me. But at the same time, as Gray mentioned, I mean, you see the whole breadth of stuff. I mean, I've got notes from diff multiple different attendings of just different stuff that you see in terms of, you know, how to take care of this, this, and this. So obviously, I think I feel prepared and comfortable in that regard of being able to see stuff. And, you know, kind of, as Gray mentioned, just for fellowships in terms of having, you know, uh, just like in residency, when you're trying to get rec letters, you know, obviously you have some attendings that don't necessarily have a stake in terms of seeing where you go in your medical school. And I feel like here in our program, like these are guys that invested in you for five years. These are guys that want to see you succeed. And these are, you know, mentors and friends that, you know, really want to go to bat for you. And I think that's really helped out kind of in the fellowship trail, especially, or even kind of on the job hunt too. I mean, our attendings know a lot of people in different locations. So, you know, having, being able to get a good word out or, you know, kind of having their recommendations running, ideas by them. And I think that also speaks to kind of how approachable our attendings are. It's, I don't feel necessarily scared to talk to anyone about stuff like this in terms of, you know, what I do for my career and, and stuff like that. Very nice. All right. Gray. Again, as the gray-haired person in our, in our group. Um, <laughs> any big the camera's not on you, but you might be in that group as well. <laughs> any big changes coming up? Uh, people, uh, you know, we get that question a lot. That's uh, a, yeah, that's a common one for sure. Um, you know, one good thing about this program is, you know, it's, it's been around for over 100 years. And it's one of the, you know, it's the first residency program. So it's, it's pretty stable. Uh, you know, they figured out kind of the right way to do things and have, have stuck with it. But, um, that being said, you know, there's always small things, kind of changing things that they're improving on, always trying to get feedback from residents and, and tailor it in a way that, that helps us as things evolve. Um, a recent change was the, the night float system, like Stephanie talked about. Um, we, you know, we got feedback from residents that, uh, you know, they, they thought that it could be done better if we switched to some type of night float, um, more manageable. And so we did. We responded to that, and this, this past year changed to that system and the, the feedback we've gotten from it so far has been positive. Um, and so that, that's one change. Um, adding on more spine staff that's coming up to, to increase our number of spine cases. So uh, no major changes, but the changes that, that have happened recently or are coming are all for the better. Things that have come from resident feedback. Um, but uh, that, those are the main things. All right. Let's kind of close out here, go in reverse order. Uh, Gijo, what's uh, one piece of advice that you can give our applicants? 
Oh man, throwing me with the heavy hitters at the end. <laughs> um, I think especially kind of looking for programs, I think the biggest thing is figuring out, okay, who are people that you can, you know, so quote unquote, go to war with, you know, people that you'd be comfortable working with, people that have your back in residency, people that, you know, I think there's an important part of being able to work hard, but I think outside of work and being able to relax, have people that are around you, kind of a good support system. Um, I think having that's going to be an important thing. I think the other big factor that a lot of applicants need to see is, you know, what is your ideas of what do you want to, an operative experience? If you, you know, want to do a lot of trauma stuff or just be able to take care of stuff in the middle of the night or be able to have a wide, you know, exposure to stuff, I think this is a great program, if not the best program in the country, just because of the fact of, you know, even just outside of our prior rotations or otherwise, you know, you have a graduate autonomy. I mean, if you're attending trust you, if you've done the research, if you know your patients, you're going to operate. I mean, there's no real, real way to get around that. And I think those are really the two big things in terms of camaraderie as well as operations that I was looking for in a program. And Campbell, you know, fit everything I needed for that. Great. Stephanie, same question. Um, well, I would just tell applicants to go with your gut. I think that was the one thing that um, when I came here on my interview day and met everybody, um, you know, you could tell that it really was a family. Everybody hung out with each other. Um, just meeting all the attendings, they're all down to earth, easy to talk to. And then um, you just kind of hear about the program, operative experience, all of that. Um, just go with your gut. There's a lot of information coming at you from different directions, um, from lots of different people. So also, you know, if you know somebody out of place, kind of talk to them and see what they, they think. Rich? Yeah, I think, I mean, just kind of my opinion about it and what I did was define what I thought good training was which is hard to do, and people may have different answers for that. They may want to go somewhere where there's a huge operative experience and tons of, tra tons of you know, hot trauma. Other people want, want to be at a place that's just you know, tons of research and, and things like that. So you know, kind of define what variables make a good training program to you, and then make your rank list or make your decisions based on, okay, what's the best training I can get under the definition that I've made, I don't, you know, the, the things and priorities that are important to me, what's the best place I can go with, with that and kind of make your rank list according to that. I, you know, I do think it's, it's gonna be interesting this, this time around where we're not doing the live interviews and, and y'all can't come socialize with us, which mm -hmm. you know, we're all very bummed about and I'm sure you guys are too, but you know, it's, that, that is a big part of it and I think it's gonna be interesting to see um, you know how uh, how everybody kind of adapts to this, but I mean it it it'll happen, and everybody's going to be just fine. Uh, everything else kind of you know icing on the cake, uh, but you should definitely strive to figure out what makes a good training program. What are your priorities, and then the most important thing is just go to the best place under that definition. Yeah, I mean I think um, you know combination of everything everyone said, like Stephanie, go with your gut. Um, this was my last interview on the interview trail and you know I was excited I'd heard great things but you know I left and called my mom on the way home and was like you know this is it um, so I think your gut is a big thing but you know kind of like Rich was saying you know make a pro and con list that's kind of what I did you know in my head everywhere because um, I definitely not only took into account the program but the city and what kind of you know social experience you would get and here was just you know an excellent combination of both so yeah. Yeah. So everybody's taking all the good answers now. So I'll, I'll go next. Uh, no, I agree 100% that uh, you need to find the right program for you. So finding what you're looking for, deciding that uh, you know as early as you can, and then finding which program fits that. Because there's not one program that fits everybody. You know, I, I'm fortunate that this was the program for me, um, and I think that that's the answer for a lot of people as well. But um, you have to find what you're looking for, and then uh, seek that out um, in terms of advice for you know the applicants when they start you know I think always always have an open mind always be willing to learn and you can learn something from anybody um, it can be junior residents it can be you know staff it doesn't matter but always be willing to learn and improve and then um, uh, and then one thing that I, I thought of as well you know when you when you graduate you get to you get you work so hard going through med school and you try to get to this point and then you, you match and you kind of hit that lull and it can sometimes be tough coming into to a program, you, you kind of taper off. So just make sure that when you, you do start back, you hit the ground running 
and you just, you know, you come ready to, to learn, ready to work, ready to get better. Uh, I think that's a good mindset to have when you go into a residency program. All right. Well, I think that wraps up. Uh, again, I, I think we at least tried to accomplish the goal of, you know, answering a lot of the questions that, you know, that we get here at Campbell Clinic. Uh, we certainly thank everybody uh, for listening to us, and we hope that this panel discussion answered you know, a lot of those questions that y you, you would have. Um, and you know, now that you have a better understanding and idea of what Camel Clinic is all about. Um, so thank you for joining us and we look forward to meeting you.